in a job interview salary negotiation, the worst case scenario is that they say, no, that's it. Aaron, no. The worst case scenario is that they retract the job offer. That is not the worst case scenario because if they do that, that company has a probably a terrible company culture and you would not want to be a part of that company, I promise you. But the best case scenario is that you get more money, even just a hundred bucks more a month compounds over time and you end up making so much more money in your life. Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Erin McGough and I'm the career and life advice content creator and documentary filmmaker living in the great city of New York. And today we're talking about how to negotiate your salary during a job interview. So I think it's safe to say that most people are scared of negotiating their salary. You go through the whole interview process, you're so excited to get an offer. Thank you. Oh God. You look at the offer and you think, oh, would it be completely inappropriate if I gave you a hug? Oh, we're almost there. Like, should I really negotiate it? Or, you know, it's fine. The offer's fine. I'll take it. It's so tempting to do that. I know. But not negotiating your salary because it makes you feel uncomfortable is literally costing you money. Like even if you just negotiate for a hundred dollars more a month, that is huge because it compounds over time, especially early on in your career. Let's look at the numbers. According to a recent study by Fidelity Investments, 58% of Americans accept the offer without negotiating. But the percentage that do negotiate out of them, 85% get at least some or all of what they asked for. Negotiating isn't rude, it's, it's normal, it's expected. It's embedded in American work culture for a reason. It's your right to advocate for yourself. $12,000. Are you kidding me? That is insultingly low. And you should do it as soon as you can, as often as you can. Okay, just one more thing. Here's an example of why it's so important to negotiate your job offer, especially early on in your career. Let's say Ross and Rachel both graduate college, they both apply for a job, and they both get an offer for $50,000 a year. Rachel thinks about negotiating, but she's like, you know, the interview process was really long, I don't want them to get offended, you know, $50,000 is good, let me just accept the offer there. But then Ross is like, you know, I know negotiating is important, so why not just ask for $55,000 a year? The worst they can do is say no. So he does. And they say yes. So they're both starting the job. Rachel at 50,000, Ross at 55,000. Let's say they work at the company for 10 years, they get an incremental 3% raise every year. That means that at year 10, Ross is making around $6,300 more than Rachel every year. And he's made over $50,000 more than Rachel since they both started. Simply because he made a decision to have a very normal and expected conversation with the company. So next, let's go through some reasons people are scared of negotiating. First of all, it makes sense to be afraid of negotiating, okay? I'm not gonna tell you that it's not scary, that it's not intimidating, that it's not uncomfortable. I always say negotiating should be a little bit awkward or you're probably not doing it right. Negotiating is a skill that you have to develop, practice, and learn over time. And later in this video, we're going to talk about specific negotiation techniques, so definitely stay tuned. So when you're going through the hiring process and you get to the very end and they give you an offer, you're so excited and you don't wanna do anything to jeopardize it. But also remember that this is a business. Of course, companies don't want you to negotiate. They want that to be uncomfortable. They're all about making money. Hello, I like money. They wanna pay you the lowest they can because companies are all about increasing profits and lowering expenses. And that's why it's so important for you to advocate for yourself because that's your right. Let's talk about the four reasons why people are afraid to negotiate a job offer. Number one, they're afraid the company is going to retract the offer. This simply doesn't happen. And if it does happen, consider it a huge blessing in disguise because that says a lot about how that company is run. And trust me, you don't want to be part of a company like that. Number two, you're afraid that they're going to be mad at you. They won't. Negotiating is extremely common and even expected. As long as you're being reasonable, polite, and professional, about your negotiation, they have no reason to be mad at you. It's not personal, it's just professional. They just want to make it a done deal and they want you to feel good and they want their boss to feel good. That's it. Number three, they're going to go with a cheaper candidate. They picked you for a reason. Imagine you're going shopping and, and you're desperately looking for a new pair of jeans. You don't have any and you really need it. So you go in and you try on a pair of jeans and they are just like amazing. They hug in all the right places, they're loose in all the right places, they're the perfect length, don't need any tailoring, the color is perfect, the pockets are deep, they're just the best jeans, they're so comfortable. So then you go and try on a second pair of jeans, you're like, you know, you never know. They're pretty good, you know, the color's nice, the pockets are still deep, but you know, the waist is a little loose and you're gonna have to get the bottom hemmed a little bit. So you think, I think I'm gonna buy that first one. You go and compare the price tags and you see that the first pair of jeans is $10 more. Are you immediately going to throw those away and go buy the second pair? No, of course not, because the first pair 
had more value to you. And it's worth that extra $10 because they are the perfect jeans. Job interviews are the same way. They're not just going to go to who is cheaper. They're going to go to who brings the most value. Be the first pair of jeans. I know you can. Number four, you're afraid that they're going to say no. They might say no. <laughs> I mean, honestly, worst case scenario is that they say, no, sorry, I mean, we, we just can't do that. We are already offering you top dollar and we really want you to work here, but I, I can't convince my boss to give you a dollar more. That's like the top of our budget. But I mean, there's other things you can negotiate besides salary, you know, depending on the company, you can negotiate um, more PTO, uh, a later start date. Um, can you work remotely? Can you have flexible hours? There's so many other things that you can negotiate. Okay, so next we're going to be talking about actually negotiating and what that looks like. So this process should start before even that first interview. You should be looking at the market and doing research because what might happen is that in that first interview, they might ask the dreadful question, so what are your salary expectations? That's a very fine question to ask, okay? Honestly, it can do you both a favor if you're really not on the same page, but here's a piping hot tea. This might be controversial, but I'm just gonna say it. When companies hire, they have a budget in mind. So when a company is like, hey, we need a video editor, they get approval from finance, they get approval from management, and they open up a job posting looking for a video editor. They have internal approvals of the range that they can pay a new video editor. So what they should do is that they should tell you what that range is. Otherwise, it's just up to you to put out a random number and you could either put out a number that's too low and completely lowball yourself, or you can put out a number that's too high and scare them away. But when you say this to companies, obviously they're like, well, we don't wanna share. We don't wanna scare you away. And in some states, you know, it's becoming law to disclose salary ranges, which I think is fantastic. But unfortunately, it's not commonplace. It's people go into the interview without talking about money and then it comes up later and it just becomes a huge issue. So it's like, why not just be honest up front, you know? But I do hear more recruiters talk about how they are disclosing that range in the first interview because it sucks for them too when they get to the end of the interview and they find out that they can't afford you. Like that's not fun for anybody. So anyway, little tangent, little tangent there. So when it comes to research, I say that there are kind of three different components to this research and it should start again before that first interview. So number one is to know the market, to know the current economic status of the country and especially your industry specifically. But that'll help you know your leverage. Does this company need you more than you need them or do you need them more than they need you? Number two is to know your package. So this is to know like what you offer to this company. Are you meeting kind of like the bare minimum for the job requirement or do you exceed it? Do you have these other skills that they would find very useful that add dollar amounts to your package? <laughs> it's like a, a weird way to say it, but it's like, and number three is to know the numbers. So you need to do actual research on what somebody with your skill set and your location and your industry would make in that role. And the best way to do that is by going to websites like Glassdoor, LinkedIn, and Payscale, looking up your job in your location and seeing what other people are getting paid. Because you can't go into an interview with a nonprofit asking for tech number salaries. It just doesn't work like that. You gotta give them the chance to even negotiate with you. So next is etiquette. And this is more of like the soft skills that really aren't taught in school. And this is especially hard to teach, especially on the internet, because every single salary negotiation is different. It's so difficult to make this video because people take it as like blanket advice and they're like, well, that doesn't apply to my situation. And it's like, yeah, not everything on the internet applies to your situation. You need to use common sense and take everything with a grain of salt. So my first rule of etiquette is to remember that you are talking to people, to human beings. They have feelings, you know, maybe they're interviewing for other jobs. Maybe their grandma's in the hospital. Maybe their dog just died. Like you never know what's going on in their life. Talk kindly to them, be friendly, be human with them and they'll be human back to you. Number two is to be kind, but firm. And this is something that people really struggle with, including myself. And later I'm gonna be talking about mistakes that people make during salary negotiations, where we're going to be talking a little bit more about this. But I recommend reading this book. Now, people in the comments might get mad at me because people love to gatekeep this book, but oh my goodness, best book Ever. It will help you with salary negotiation. Chris Voss is an absolute genius and his techniques are amazing. So go buy this book. I have a link down in the description. Life-changing. Read it right now. <laughs> it's so good. 
And then my last rule of etiquette, number three, is to not be emotional about it. This is another place where people get tripped up, but salary negotiation, it's not personal and it's not emotional. It might feel like it because you're feeling a lot of emotions like awkwardness and uncomfortableness and defensiveness and desperateness, but it, it really is just professional. You are offering a service to them. You are saying, I'm an accountant, I'm an editor, I'm a marketer, and you need me. So let's figure out a deal together that works for both of us. It's really important to just keep things professional, to keep things neutral, and to keep things firm. Don't be wishy-washy, you know? Know what you want, know your worth, and ask for it. You're never gonna get what you don't ask for. In our next section, we're going to be talking about language when it comes to salary negotiation. So let's go through a typical interview scenario. First thing that you're gonna do is go into a job interview and you're gonna answer, you know, tell me about yourself and what's your greatest strength and weakness and what can you bring to the role? And then they might ask you, what are your salary expectations? Now this is where like the soft advice comes in. This is purely my opinion. You'll hear people with other opinions. This is just my opinion. I encourage you to get a lot of people's opinions and then to come to a conclusion yourself. I recommend never ever being the first person to put out a number in a negotiation. As studies show us, history shows us, psychology shows us, the first person to put out a number in a negotiation has a weaker stance. It's just true. And if anybody's out there encouraging you to, oh, do you know, just put out a solid number. If the first person to put out a number in a negotiation has a stronger stance, then why isn't every company being the first one to put out a number? I'm just saying, okay, I'm done. I'm just saying, everybody's gonna get mad at me for that. But like, that's, let's be honest here. <laughs> so anyway, you go to the job interview and they ask you, what are your salary expectations? Your first priority should be trying to not put out that first number, at least in the first interview. We are prepared to make you a very generous offer. And we are prepared to reject that offer. So you can say something like, thanks for asking. My salary range is flexible. Of course, I'd like to be compensated fairly. And I'm open to discussing a solid number once I learned more about the details of the position. That's a perfectly fine answer perfectly fine. Because it's true, you need to learn more about the job in order to put out a number. But what might happen is that they might press. So they might say, oh yeah, well, you know, could you just give me a number? I just need to write something down. Which could be true, but it's, again, it's, why don't they tell you the number? Anyway, ugh. so if they really keep pressing, give them a range and make sure that the bottom number of that range is the number that you actually want. <laughs> so if you're currently making $50,000 at your job and at your next job you wanna make $60,000, tell them your range is 60 to $70,000. So even if they hit that low end of that range, you're still making at least what you wanted. But again, try to not be the first person to put out a number. It might be kind of hard, but stick to your guns and embrace awkward silences. It's like a general thing in negotiation. Just embrace the awkward silence. So let's say then you get to the end of the interview process and they offer you the job and they say, congrats, we'd love to offer you the job. This is amazing, when can you start? Keep it cool, don't fall for that. You're desirable, lots of people want you. You could go anywhere you want. I mean, be grateful, obviously say like, you know, thank you so much, this is so exciting. Don't be a jerk about it. Thank you so much, I'm, I'm so flattered that you want me to join your team. I would love to review a written offer letter or uh, if they did send the written offer letter, just say, you know, I'm, I'm gonna review the written offer letter. So here are five things that people get wrong during their salary negotiations that you need to watch out for. Number one is that they don't understand their leverage. So leverage is a fancy term for what do you have in the negotiation? What do you have over them? What ability do you have to walk away? For example, you having two job offers at the same time is like the ultimate leverage. Cause it's like, hey, you know, both want me, I can just go to whoever I want. That is the ultimate leverage. But if you know you're currently unemployed and the market is really bad, you don't really have a lot of leverage. You should still try to negotiate, of course, but you don't necessarily have the strongest hand. The problem is that so many people go into negotiations not understanding their leverage. So they think that they're either not good enough, they're wishy-washy, they're not confident about your negotiation and a loose negotiation is not a good thing. You wanna be able to stand firm. You want to act like you have 10 other offers and this company is just an option for you. Of course, don't be arrogant about it, be very grateful, but that's how you want to kind of appear to the company. Because at the end of the day, it's like, 
you're like selling yourself as a product. <laughs> That's like what job interviews are. It's like you go in like as a product and you're like, hey, I'm the full package. Number two is that they oversell themselves. So people during a negotiation will be like, you know what, I was really thinking um, $55,000 would be better than $50,000 because, well, I have all these great skills and I speak all these languages and you know, I'm really good at this and I'm really good at this. Stop that. You already made it to the end of the interview. They already want you. Stop selling, okay? Like, if if you initially ask and they say, can you, you know, give me some juice, you know, give me some reasons why you think you should be paid more, um, then feel free to name a couple things. But you have won the game already. Don't oversell yourself because you might come off desperate. A lot of people come off desperate in a negotiation. They already bought what's going on here, okay? Number three is that people don't do their research. So they go in with like the best negotiation techniques and they're ready to go, but uh, they're negotiating tech prices at a nonprofit. <laughs> so they like go in and the company truly can't afford to pay more than $52,000 a year for the role. And you go in and you're like $100,000, take it or leave it. Applying all these great negotiation techniques and you're being firm and you're mirroring and you're, you know, doing everything right, but the company simply can't meet you where you're at. They can't even meet you halfway where you're at. So it's important to go in well-researched and to know what the company can actually afford to pay you, which I know is hard to do, but if you do enough research, you can generally gather what they could pay you and then add 10% more of that. Number four is that they get defensive. So, you know, you counter, you're like, oh, you know, well, you know, could you do 55,000 instead of 50? And the company's like, you know, well, can you, you know, um, supply some reasons like you know why um, we should pay you more and they're like well you just should you know it's like I have all these skills and I'm really valuable and it's like it's not it's not emotional they're not offending you by asking you to supply some reasons they're not trying to offend you they're just trying to get some information so that they can take it to whoever they need to who makes the decision it's not it's not personal it's just professional Number five is that they only negotiate salary. So there are so many other things that you can negotiate besides salary. I mean, you have your start date, benefits, PTO, remote work, flexible hours, signing bonus, stock options. There are so many other things depending on the company. And just some, some last parting words are to practice negotiating with friends and family, to have somebody sit down with you and to pretend to be that HR professional and to go back and forth and then to get feedback from them on how you come off. And I know, I know it can just seem easier to just not do it. It's like, you know what? They're so nice by offering me this job in the first place, but that thought is costing you money. So every time you have that thought, imagine taking $5,000 and putting it in the trash can because that's essentially what you're doing. So go out and negotiate. Let me know what other videos that you guys would like to see from the channel. Please subscribe and like for more videos like this and follow me on TikTok and Instagram for daily advice and explore some fun links down in my bio. Thanks y'all for tuning in and until next time.